Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So in this particular video, uh, we're not going to be talking about fiberglassing or the hull extension of my boat today. We're going to be having a look at some of the electrical circuits that I'm going to be installing into the boat. So what's happened and the reason for that is because basically um, I, we're in North Queensland, tropical North Queensland, and we've now had two cyclones pass across the North Queensland coast. Um, we had Cyclone Jasper that uh, passed the coast up near Cairns and dumped a lot of water on Cairns and we had a lot of water and humidity down here in, in Townsville where I am, which is not ideal for fiberglassing. Uh, I did do a bit prior to that, a bit of fiberglassing prior to that and that created some problems for me. It was 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, uh, very, very hot, very humid. I shouldn't have probably done it. I, I need to get that boat out of drop off the dry stand and back into the water. So I'm I'm really eager to, to get this thing finished, but I've got to be realistic about it as well. So anyway, so whilst I can't, oh, that's all right. We also had cyclone. What was it called? Kiralee. Anyway, it came across Townsville. Uh, it crossed the coast just above Townsville, I believe. It was a Cat One, Cat Two. So it it it, it was the winds weren't that weren't as bad as we were expecting but again a lot of rain no fiberglassing can't do it so what i've decided to do is have a look at some of the electrical uh the systems that i'm going to be installing into my boat i'm going to go through the whole process from start to finish from the design right up to the fit off i'm going to talk about the wires and cables the sizes the fuses I'm going to talk about how I come up with those calculations. I am an electronics technician by trade. I've got 40 years experience in, in electronics and uh, I would hope that I, I know what I'm talking about. There are a few things that, um, you know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've been in building the construction industry for 30 odd years and in that time I've worked on construction projects worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, not just the electronics or the fire protection systems, and that's what I do, fire protection systems, security systems, CCTV, all the electronics, ELV stuff. So I'm not talking, when I talk about four, five, six hundred million dollars worth of project, I'm talking about the whole construction, right? So within that process, there's obviously a lot of rough end cabling, a lot of things that have got to be done. Um, so from an electronics point of view, and all of this sort of stuff, I get it. I know, I understand it. I will. There are going to be times where we make little mistakes, right? And I've never been on a construction site within that 30 years where there haven't been things we call variations. So you get a design, it's all marked up on paper, you know what I mean? And then you go, oh, this doesn't work. Oh, this fuse is wrong. Or oh, that cable size is wrong. That creates a change to design and a variation to the project. So this here is my design that I've started to create for my boat. Uh, it's not finished, as you can hopefully see here. It, it's big bold letters, not complete, not for construction. They're the terms we typically use. And it's the start of the process. And what I've done here is I've used SmartDraw, is, is a software application. It's a web-based application that you can use and it's, um, it's great. I, I find it probably one of the really easy ones for electrical circuits. It's set up for electrical circuits. It's got all the little symbols there, the fuses, the relays, the switches. It's got everything from a diode, a transistor, MOSFETs, and everything all sitting there in a database where you can just go click on it, drag it across, put it into your circuit, and use it. And that's kind of what I've done here. To make it a little bit um, easier to understand, I've uh, done some copy and paste stuff from uh, little images to to make it nice and easy to, to understand. The wires, I've looked at the wires, I've looked at the loads, I've looked at how much current each device is gonna draw, the load on the circuit, and then I've calculated the uh, wire size that I need for that individual device. I've taken into consideration AMSA requirements, Australian Maritime Safety Authority, for the circuits. Um, even though it's not required in, a, uh, in, in my vessel, it's the, these requirements are typically for commercial vessels. Um, I, I don't need to worry about it for my little family boat. What do you call that? I can't remember. Anyway, um, 
it, it's not a requirement, but I'm going to take it to the next level because I want the very best electrical circuits that I can have on my boat. I don't want breakdowns, I don't want problems. I want it all to be new, I want it all to be reliable, and I don't want any issues while I'm 100 mile out at sea because that's what I want to do. I want to go 100 mile, 150 nautical mile out to sea, and I want to be able to wake up in the morning and go, boom, start those engines, boom, away we go, without any dramas. So, the idea of this video is just to give you an idea, an overview of what I'm going to be doing in, uh, in the future. Uh, I'm going to be looking at how I've come up with all of these circuits, why I'm using certain devices, why I'm using certain cable sizes, wire sizes. A cable is typically uh, a, a big cable with multiple conductors in it. I mean, there might be, you know, three or four wires contained within double insulated PVC jacketed cable or something like that. Some of the marine, <coughs> excuse me guys, I get a really raspy throat. I think I've said this once before. Raspy throat when I'm talking too much. I'm not much of a talker. And me throat, not used to it. A bit of lubrication. But anyway, um, so if we just have a look here, I'm just going to read you some of the things that I've, I've highlighted on this drawing, uh, which is, you know, part of my design here. So some of the notes, just, just uh, a very, very basic. Now, that's the other thing I probably want to talk about is one of the things that I hope to do, I hope to be able to do, is I'm gonna break this down um, into the very, very basics. And this is gonna be for people that don't understand the basics of electronics or electrical wiring. And I'm not going into LV wiring, okay? So I am an electronics technician. I've been around ELV circuits all of my life. And um, basically, you know, we're going to be talking about this sort of stuff, ELV, the 240 volt side of this is going to be done by one of my mates, a licensed electrician, one of my contractors who I do a lot of work with, and he's going to be doing the LV circuit on that, putting in the GPOs and bonding the different medical, medical metal parts of the boat and, and so on, just to make it all compliant and safe, yeah? So, what we've got here and what I've tried to take, and, oh, the, <laughs> Here we go again. The batteries have not arrived yet. I've ordered my battery. So the battery that I'm gonna be using for my house side is lithium ion phosphate, LIFEPO4. So I have I did a lot of research on lithium batteries and I was hesitant at first to, to go down the lithium battery side, but I did a lot of research and I looked at all the different chemical structures of lithium and I, I realized that lithium ion phosphate is the safest and it's the, definitely the best for what I'm going to be doing and what I want out of it. I've gone with a battery that I've sourced from Australia. It's from PowerPool Australia and uh, it's a 300 amp hour, I think it's called a Scout, Club Scout, something like that. So it's a big, it's going to be a decent battery, 300 amp hour. Um, I might have to do some calculations again later on to work out whether or not I need a secondary one. And that's another thing to consider is this is going to be progressive. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting my critical circuits up and running so that I can get the boat back on the water. And then later on, I'm going to be adding things to it. Uh, so my, the, the, the high load systems like uh, I'm, I am going to be taking into consideration a gyro. So uh, gyro stabilizer. So I'm going to be looking at that. My drum winch. My drum winch, uh, maximum current for my drum winch, which is a Sav winch SS3000, big drum. So it's capable of drawing 120 amps for however long it takes you to get that anchor up off the reef or off a rock, whatever. Um, so I've got to take all of that into consideration. And I've done that within all of this. And I'll talk about that. I'll talk about the cable schedules, how I calculated. So this table here, is basically what we call a cable schedule. So what I've done is I've itemized every device that I've got on the boat and I've looked at its load and it, if it tells me that it's uh, you know gonna be drawing two amps, then I've calculated that back and I've gone, okay, I need a, a two millimeter squared wire or a four millimeter squared wire or a six millimeter squared wire, depending on whether or not it's part of the critical circuit. And then I've matched it, right? Okay. Uh, and the, the thing about it is, I guess 
when I've selected all of my fuses, I'm selecting my fuses to protect the wire, to protect the cable that's supplying that load, the wire of the cable that's protecting that load. All right, it's not to protect the device. It's not to protect the, the device at all. The device protection is within the device itself. Typically, your VHF radio or your chart plotter, your GPS, is gonna have a fuse internal to it. That's there to protect the device. What we're doing is we're putting fuses and switch boxes and as close to the source as possible, the source being the battery, close to the source as possible to protect the cables or the wires, okay? I'm gonna be talking about all of the different sizes of uh, wires, so that's a wire. So that there is a 32 mil, oh, yeah, 32 millimeter squared tin copper cable. Excuse me, burping here. It's 32 millimeter tin copper cable that's gonna be supplying uh, my uh, DC circuits. So it's gonna be going out to my house site and that'll all be distributed from there out. Now, once again, we'll, I'll hopefully put this up on my computer screen. I'll show you how I came up with all of this, all of this information. Um, but I haven't taken any of this lightly. I spent hours and hours and hours sitting down and working out. Now you can just go out there and go, oh, I just start throwing cables in everywhere. But no, I wanted to plan this. I wanted to make sure that I take everything into consideration, that uh, everything that is that I need to connect to has been taken into consideration. So some of the things that I'm gonna be connecting to, guys. So yes, this is my, so this is gonna be essentially my solar system. I've gone with Victron because they, uh, I, I want a, the best quality that I could afford, and this seemed to be it. The only problem that I have with it is this is a MultiPlus 2. Them things are heavy. They are really heavy. So when I put that in the boat, I've got to consider, you know, the load that that's gonna put on my, the, the walls of the bearers. I've currently got it inside an IP rated enclosure. The reason for that is because it is going into a boat and there is the capacity for it. If that was outside on, not outside, but in, even in the cab on a wall or something, there's the potential for it to get spray or wet or whatever, so I wanted to protect it. Yes, I know that you need ventilation around these things because they've got a massive big heat sink on the back of them. The heat sink is basically to draw the the uh, heat away from the device and let air get around it to cool it. Uh, but I've also I've got an aluminium plate on the back of it. The intent or the idea of that is again to draw more heat away from the devices and to allow the air to cool it. Now what I'm going to do is uh, when I get all of this connected up and I get when the battery arrives and I, and I connect it all up, what I'm going to do is basically test it. So I'm going to have microwave ovens and anything they're going to have on the boat, I'm going to have sitting here and I'm going to record it. I'm going to have it sitting here. I'm going to measure the current. I'm going to have a look at the worst case scenario that I would imagine that's going to happen on my boat. And I'm going to draw heaps and heaps of current out of this thing. I'm going to have it connected to my solar system, my solar panels, which are over there. You can't see them, but uh, we're going to measure the temperature. We're going to measure the temperature by this little wireless LCD thermometer. We're going to have that sitting inside of this enclosure and we're going to put it under test, under load, and we're going to work it. We're going to, uh, in its worst case scenario, we're going to work out how hot it gets inside of that enclosure. So that when I put this on my boat, it's either going to be in this enclosure or I'm going to pull it out of the enclosure and, and give it more ventilation. All right, so that's the idea. We need to take into consideration the amount of air that's going to be so going to be able to cool this down. If I've got to put fans in the side of it, I'm willing to do that because when you put an IP enclosure like this, the last thing that you should be doing is drilling holes in the side of it because then your IP rating is gone. All right, it's just forget it. It's not IP rated anymore. Unless you use an IP glands and things, and we're going to have a look at that. We're going to, this is all going to take quite a bit of time because there's a lot involved in this. It, it's it's like doing an apprenticeship but in 10 minutes yet yeah, no nah, that's not going to happen so it's going to take months and months and months for me to go through all of this stuff and get it all right and and do the planning and get all of the information right tick all of the boxes yeah i'm not taking any risks with this stuff this has got to be right so in this enclosure here we've got 
DC circuit breakers for our solar panels, our PVs coming down into there. I'm breaking both the negative and the negative side of those coming in. Then I've got my MPPT after that. MPPT is feeding into my Lynx distributor. And then basically I've got uh, a fuse. I'm gonna have my isolating switch connected to all of that so that I can turn it off and isolate it from the batteries. Uh, I've also got a uh, Lynx um, smart shunt down there. So that's gonna be, all that's gonna be connected up. I've got already started to install some mega fuses, but they may have to change as I change the design because the design's not complete. Remember my little note on there? Yeah, not yet complete, not for construction. So as we get further and further into this, that'll change, that could potentially change. Maybe not, I don't know, I don't care. I really don't, as long as I get it right at the end, that's all I, all I, all I really want to be confident with. So that's all of our links, uh, all of our Victron gear. We've got a Servo SGX sitting here so that we can monitor everything and have a look at what's going on. I've got the little uh, touch screen as well that I'm going to be setting up. And it's all, again, how much space have I got? I don't know. I haven't worked that because I've cut a big hole out of the back of my boat. And when I say hole out of the back, as you come out of the cabin, I wanted to open up that space. So I'm missing walls now. I've got to take that into consideration when I do my structure on the boat, but it is what it is. It's all good. So what I've used here is I've used slotted duct. And the reason that I've used slotted duct is I wanted mechanical protection for my wires and cables. And slotted duct for the DC cables was the way to go in this case. Because a slotted duct, you can pull the trunking off it, you pull the cover off it and get your wires into place and everything. But again, I will go through that and I'll show you exactly how I did it all and I've set it all up. Um, and some of the things that I want to talk about during this process as well is the minor details, like not everybody knows what a fuse is. I'm going to talk about a fuse. I'm going to talk about how to measure a fuse, how to measure the potential difference across the fuse, the resistance of the fuse, and all of the little different bits and pieces that a lot of people may not know or understand. I'm going to talk about voltages, the potential difference, and I talk about uh, the potential difference of a circuit board. Like when we're talking about a circuit board, we're talking about a big printed circuit board that's got lots of different integrated circuits and different components on it. And then you use that negative rail as your reference and you measure between lots of different rails. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about how I select the fuses and wires have probably said that. Some of the other things that I'm also gonna be doing is I've got an IP rated monitor here. So the idea on this IP rated monitor, so this is, I believe this is IP66 rated. So it's gonna be sitting on the back deck with me. What I'm gonna have is typically the boat is driven from the flybridge, but when I'm trolling, I don't wanna be sitting up on the flybridge and running down to my rods when they go, <laughs> big fish dragging off, you know? So I'm gonna have a monitor sitting down there and it's gonna be looking at CCTV cameras that I'm gonna have up on the bridge. And they're going to be looking port side, starboard side, ahead. And I'm going to be able to see exactly what's going on. And I'm just going to be, that's going to be up there, you know. And I'm going to be able to go, oh, cool. cool. No boats, no reef, nothing to hit. Sweet, all safe. So that's part of it. But to do that, I need this guy. Mobile MVR. Alright, so this MVR is a PoE MVR, Power Over Ethernet MVR. And it's, they're our PoE ports. So I can connect four cameras up to this guy without having to split anything or put switches or anything else on it. And I've also got a 4G uh, network on it. So I can basically monitor my cameras. If I have this running, I can monitor my cameras off the boat. But I haven't made the decision about whether or not I'm gonna to wanna to do that or not. Um, because it'd be much easier just to have cameras that, you know, your Wi-Fi cameras or something else that didn't rely on having an MVR in there. Um, and this draws a bit of current. So this, I've already measured this, so I've had it set up, and this draws about 1.2 amps. amps. Uh, that's its quiescent current. So that means it's just sitting there idle. All it's doing is powering our cameras. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going through menus or doing anything else. And it's sitting there, and it's drawing 1.2 amps with four cameras on. So that's my MVR, mobile MVR. 
it's I'm also going to be setting up uh, oh, I've got a Teltonica system here so this Teltonica AUT955 is another way that I can monitor circuits when I'm off the boat and there's a lot of different systems here, here now that you can do this with Victron have a 4G system where you can monitor the battery voltages and everything so for this guy here I can do anything with it I can have a 4G SIM card sitting inside of this and it's got multiple inputs. I don't know how many inputs I've got. I think it's four inputs, four outputs, something like that. And uh, what I can do with that is I can have, uh, let's say, float switches that are basically sitting in my bilge that keep an eye on the water level. If I'm off the boat and I'm at work doing something else, for some reason there's a lot of rain or you know something fails on the boat, the bilge pump doesn't work for whatever reason, and that that um, uh, switch comes up that float switch comes up it'll just trigger this it's a dry contact so it's just a re not not a relay it's just a dry contact and what I mean by that is just a switch it goes click 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 right and it sends a signal to this and this will dial out to me and go hey Rob better go back to your boat mate that bloody thing's sinking well, I hope that's not the case but uh, I can keep an eye on it and that'd be great if I had the cameras on there and everything. I'd go, hmm, let's go and have a look at the camera and have a look at that on your phone. And oh, no, it's all, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Okay. So that's that. So we've looked at the mobile MVR, the RT. Oh, this, by the way, yes, you can set up wire, Wi Fi networks and everything on your boat as well. So if you've got the kiddies on the boat or you know, you want to have, have little antennas, they're your 4G antennas. Have another little antenna for your Wi Fi that sits in here same sort of thing and basically you would have a boat that's got Wi-Fi everybody can sit there on their tablets or their phones and go and play their games whatever as long as you're within range and you got some sort of signal whatever or, yeah you can you can do whatever you want so that's going to be going on the boat as well um, I got to take into consideration the quiescent current how much current that draws when it's just sitting there idle and I'll work out whether or not I'm going to switch it off and I'll leave the boat. Lots of different things to take into consideration. So what else have we got? So we've looked at the monitor. Um, we've looked at some of the Victron gear. There's going to be more Victron gear, but this is what we're going to be doing in the future. This is what the, my intent is, is to, to create all of these different things on the boat. What are some of the things that I've also noted on here? What have I got? Oh, stereo system. I'm going to have a stereo system on the boat. The main system is going to be sitting up on the flybridge. I've taken that into consideration. You'll see that again, you know. So that's basically it there. Again, not for construction, guys. So if I've got to make some changes, I can still make those changes, add fuses, change cable sizes, and modify the circuit to make sure that I've taken everything into consideration before I put it on the boat. Again, so this here is, is the start of my cable schedule. So I'm looking at the cable. So the things that I've got on there are the, the, the device itself. So let's have a look at the flybridge. So the cable running up to the flybridge has got to be able to supply the current to all of the devices that are sitting up there. So this is coming from, from deck up to the flybridge and I've got the flybridge at 150 amps. I've taken into consideration my overall cable length. So that is eight meters. I've looked at the voltage drop. So voltage drop as as per AMSA requirements for critical circuits is 3%. So I've taken that into consideration. Then I've looked at the overall uh, size of the conductor that I need to comply with those requirements. The maximum load, 150 amps, with no way known I'm gonna draw 150 amps from that flybridge. But I want clean power up there. I don't want dirty power, I don't want the, the cable to be struggling and going, you know, having ups and downs and you're having all sorts of noise on your chart plotters and GPS. I don't want that. So I'm overcompensating and I'm putting a big, big, big cable up that up to that, right? To make sure that that power up on that flight bridge is gonna be clean. And all my electronics up there has got clean power. Uh, so the wire size, I've calculated that 32 millimeters squared, that's all fine and the fuse size, I'm gonna put a 100 amp fuse in there. And the reason, that cable is, is capable of far more than that, 150 amps. So the reason 
I've done that is because the fuse is there to protect the cable, right? If I get 100 amps drawn from that flybridge, I know, hey, there's something wrong. The fuse is gonna pop and it's gonna save the cable and everything else on that flight. Well, not everything else. It'll depend, there might be a fault up on the flybridge which is making it draw all that current. Hopefully that internal fuse within the device is gonna blow before that fuse does, all right? So what else have we got? So we've got the mobile MVO, we've got the network, we've got the alarm system. The alarm system may be, Teltonica, we'll look at that. Uh, I may want to expand on that later on. I've got my bilge pump circuits. I've got my winch circuits. I've got my radio, VHF radio. I've got my boom, bo not boom box, stereo system. So I'm gonna have speakers up in the flybridge. I'm gonna have speakers down on the back deck. When you cruise along, you're doing a four, four hour run somewhere. You wanna be able to listen to something, yeah? Get out there in a bit of style and comfort. Uh, I've also taken into consideration two uh, combo sounders, so GPS units, two of them, two 12 inch ones, so that's the maximum size I'm gonna put on there, and I've taken those loads into consideration, the amount of current that that's gonna draw. So, all of that, the radar, I don't know if I'm gonna put a radar on this boat yet, and, that, and I'll work that out, and radar is good for finding some fishing grounds, looking for birds, looking for different things, but, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at changing over from the electronics that I've currently got on the boat to another brand. Again, a decision that I have not yet made, and it's a decision that I will tell you is all about when it comes time. Uh, we've got bilge, ah, uh, bridge lights, not bilge lights. What are all the bilge for? Bridge lights, navigation lights, bridge spotlight, VHF radio, compass, and stereo. So they're all the things that I've taken into consideration. They've all been fused, they're all protected, and they're all switched. All right, and then down on the deck, I've got uh, two to the flybridge, so I'm protecting the flybridge with a uh, fuse and circuit breaker down on the on, on the deck, as well as all these other circuits. So I've got cabin lights, flood lights, stern light, bilge pump, uh, bilge pump cabin, bilge pump port side, and then I'll have a bilge pump on the starboard side as well. Uh, I might even have a fourth one. So a lot of different things there. All the fuses protecting my MVRs and everything else. I've taken all of that into consideration. But uh, th this could change. Now, the other thing that I've noted on this page here is, like I said to you, the drum winch that I'm using is the Sav winch. It's an Australian drum winch. And in their operation manual, in their data sheets, they've actually got all of the details that I need. Hello. Oh. Um, yeah. With regards to the cable size for it. So... And it even takes into consideration the length of the cable. So it's got here four up to 4.5 meters of cable use bit for BNS uh, and it experienced 6% voltage drop. Now, that I'm probably gonna go a bit heavier. And I'll, again, when we get to that, I'll explain. I want that 3%. Whether the anchor in my particular situation is going to be considered a critical circuit? Nah, not really, because in that boat, I've done it many, many times in smaller boats, if my anchor gets caught up, and the reason, the big reason that I went to, I had a, uh, a different style of winch on there. Um, I had a winch that was only suitable for chain, and I didn't like that idea. And the reason that I didn't like that idea is because some of the areas that I'm going to get close into, rocky areas, reefy areas, if I get caught up on the reef, the only way that I can get off of that is to cut it, cut the chain. And what do I need for that? Special tooling. How am I going to cut a chain? Angle grinder. I'm going to carry an angle grinder on my boat. Look at that. So I went to a sav winch. The sav winch has rope and chain. So 10 metres of chain up to the anchor, and then it's got rope. It's a uh, nylon... It's a special, I don't know, I'll, we'll have a look at that later. Rope, uh, 200 metres of rope uh, to the winch itself, and I think there's more chain. But, you know, that's, so they take that into consideration. For up to nine metres of cable, you use three BNS, um, and experience 8% voltage drop. For up to 13.5 metres of cable, use two BNS. So two BNS is equivalent, I believe, to my 32 millimetre squared 
bang, 10 copper cable. So that'll experience a 9% voltage drop. Now that's 13.5 meter run. Now I'm not running at 13.5 meters either, so. There we go guys, look, that's kind of where we're gonna be at, what we're gonna be looking at on my boat. Uh, a lot of the information contained within here, you know, is, is specific to my boat, how I'm gonna set it up. But if you wanna plan the wiring of your boat and have a look at it, then, you know, take all of these sort of things into consideration. Uh, I, like I said, I will be breaking this down further and further and further into smaller bite-sized pieces and make it really, really simple for those that don't understand ELV circuits, electronics and, and everything else. If you want to do the DIY stuff, then you might get something from this. Yeah, we'll look at uh, all of those sorts of things. Hopefully I'm going to try and make it as interesting as I possibly can and uh, make it a bit of fun. I'm going to do different um, uh, exercises or, or, or different pro I'm going to, like I said to you, I'm going to put a thermostat, oh, not a thermostat, what are they, all this thing? Thermometer, yeah, it's a thermometer, thermometer. So it measures temperature, obviously, LCD thermometer. So I'm gonna put it inside of this thing, and I'm gonna put heaps of loads on, I'm gonna see how hot it gets with that door closed. We'll see if it's suitable. If it's not, it comes out. But anyway, that's where we're gonna be heading in, in the future, when I can't be doing the fiberglass work, and then there may be some delays when I'm out doing the fiberglass work, and doing the structure to the boat. But I hope, you know, you get, excuse me again, I hope you're going to get something from this and, um, and, and, and get a bit of, have, have a bit of fun with it. Um, so that's it. There we go. And uh, the usual guys, uh, if you get something this, if you think you're going to enjoy this, please like and subscribe and please, um, I'll see you on the next one. Legends. Good on you guys. Stay safe and please be good to your fellow human being. Good on you. Cheers, legends.